What's up guys, it's Marius from Audio Judgment and today I'm going to show you how to design and build a small sealed active subwoofer for home. And that's pretty much it. In this video, you are going to learn how to design a sealed subwoofer box the easiest way possible. Also, you are going to watch me build one. And finally, I'm going to point out a minor inconvenience with uh, the Dayton Audio Plate amplifier. For this build, we are going to use a small driver, the Dayton Audio Ultimax 8 inch, and we are going to make a sealed enclosure. The idea is to make a small footprint box. With that particular purpose in mind, a combination of an 8 inch woofer and a sealed box should result in a small enclosure. First of all, let me show you how to design a sealed subwoofer box. I'm not going to go into details about the sealed enclosure and stuff like that. I'm just going to give you some basic instructions to design one super fast and be amazed how easy it is. For this, we are going to use an Excel spreadsheet, which I made. This can be found in my Acoustics 101 course, but I'll make sure to set up a download link on my website so you can have access to it even if you are not enroll, enrolled into the course. The spreadsheet can be used to design both sealed and base reflex enclosures in both metric and imperial units of measurement. If you want to play around in the base reflex tabs, you can go ahead, but for now I'm just going to show you how to design a sealed box. Before we do that, I'm going to give you a brief description regarding this spreadsheet. So when you see an orange cell, that is where you are going to input data. If the cell is gray, then that means there is a formula there and if you write something in that cell, you will overwrite the formula. However, since people might do that accidentally, I protected the cell so you can't do that by mistake. You can remove the protection if you want, uh, the password is just a blank. Now that we got that out of the way, we can begin using the spreadsheet. What concerns the speaker parameters, we only need three. Yep, you heard me, just three. So open up the spec sheet of the driver and look for FS, QTS and VAS. Copy the numbers into the spreadsheet. So uh, 31.6 Hertz, QTS of 0 0.58 and VAS of 21.3 liters. After that, we can enter a box volume and check out the model frequency response. I'm going to enter a random number, uh, let's say 30 liters. Now let me explain the calculated parameters. QL, you should not concern yourself with that number. Uh, FB is the resonant frequency of the box. F3 is the 3 dB point below linear response, or in other words, you can say that this is the lowest frequency the subwoofer will play in a linear fashion. And the last one is QTC, and this is the golden number. Normally, people try to achieve the maximally flat response, and that coincides with the QTC of 0.707. And conveniently, I place the calculator just below and you can input what QTC value you want to achieve and it outputs what volume the box needs to be. So enter 0.707 and the box needs to be 43.84 liters. Now you can enter that value just above and check the modeled frequency response. Now since this is a sealed box, we can easily play with the volume. Let's say that we think 43 liters is a bit too big and we want to make the box smaller. Let's go for 25 liters. 
As you make the box smaller, the response will start to form a peak before roll-off and F3 will go higher. So when it comes to the low frequencies, the response is not as good. Now this is not particularly visible, so let me decrease the volume even more, let's say 10 liters. Now you can clearly see the peak. In terms of QTC, you should aim for 0.7. If you want to make the box smaller, exceeding QTC of 1 is bad and exceeding 1.2 should be avoided. If for some reason you want to make the box bigger, QTC will go down, so let's say 100 liters. Two things happen. F3 point is better and transient response is also better. Perfect transients are achieved at the QTC of 0.5. So if I input 0.5 in the QTC calculator, 0.5, we see a negative number. Why? Because the QTS of the speaker is 0.58. When you place this speaker in a sealed box, QTC will be higher than 0.58. It can be equal to 0.58 if the box is large enough, but not lower. So the 0.5 QTC case is an impossible scenario with this speaker. Now let's get to actually designing this box. So if QTC of 0.7 is 43 liters, so 0.7 is uh, 0.707 is 43 liters. This is a bit too big, so let's aim for 0 0.8 QTC, 23.6 liters. Let's round this to 23. Now this is the net internal volume of the box, but we also have the speaker inside the box, bracing and the plate amplifier, which does occupy some space. So we need to make the box bigger than 23. However, we are going to fill the box with dampening material and besides all sorts of benefits with uh, reducing standing waves and reducing panel resonances, it also increases the perceived volume of the box. As a result, even if I make a physical box of let's say 20 liters internal volume, if I fill it up with dampening material, the speaker sees the box as, I don't know, 23-24 liters. This depends on what material you use and how much of it you are using. But if you fill the box up, which you should definitely do, the gain is technically 10%, but I have easily seen 30% boost in perceived volume. So in that case, I'm going to leave the box at 23 liters and the volume displaced by the speaker, amp and brace is compensated by the fact that I will add the uh, dampening material. And that is pretty much it with designing, let's get to building.
The box is now done, but I'm still having some issues. There are air leaks around the buttons on the plate amplifier. I tried to investigate and use some silicone to patch the leaks. It seems that the only spot where air can escape is around the rubber plug, which covers the bass boost switch, and around the speaker wires. After the silicone has dried up, the issue was still present. Here's what I mean. Now I can't return this plate amplifier as I snipped the spade connectors from the speaker wire and also added the silicone to the amp, so I contacted Dayton Audio with my issue. They replied quite fast the very next day and said, Hello, if you are using the plate amplifier in a sealed sub that has a high level of cone travel, it may be required to build a back box for the amplifier to keep it isolated from the air pressure. Really? The air leaks are there regardless if I use it in a bass reflex sealed or whatever box. Maybe not as obvious, but the leaks are there and there are, they are noisy at high levels. The fact that all of the electrical components are sealed in this plastic capsule tells me that this amp will not leak air. They should mention this in the product's description that the amp needs a separate airtight chamber. Anyway, I guess I will use this amp in another project, but for now I'm left with a perfectly veneered, useless box. Nice. But anyway, if you want to build a sealed subwoofer box using this exact speaker and plate amp, I will link to an article where you will find this exact design but with a separate chamber for the plate amp so there will be no air leak issue. So that's a wrap for this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this. I wish you happy holidays and see you in 2021. Peace!